At this very moment, there is currently a study going on by scientists collectively put together from all around the world that have evidence to suggest, it is not concluded yet, but evidence to suggest that there is an ability to be able to determine where a certain animal sits on the hierarchy and the survival pyramid, if you will, and the food chain based on looking at their eyeballs literally now it's been speculated before that you know the retina of the human eyeball is very similar to that of the universe when you look at certain galaxies from a certain distance and things like this which only furthers the theory and proposal that all is one and one is all especially considering the fact that humans have allegedly been made from stardust and things like this if you really go back to you know the big bang and all that now before i go into that i just want to give a quick shout out to chris from australia because i'd like to thank him for all of his work and contributions for helping me put together some episodes and notes and i'd also like to give a shout out to eric rez as well so thank you guys very much for your support for your help and for uh, watching and listening uh, consistently so thank you very very much now it's no coincidence that people who are spiritual or very intuitive tend to look in the eyes of other human beings to be able to read them or to be able to understand them. This is going to be something that will connect to something called light codes a little bit later in the episode. And that's also thanks to uh, Jamila from Fine Liaison. She introduced me to this, uh, this whole concept of light codes. So I don't want to be taking the credit when I did not um, formulate this myself. Now, what we first need to understand is we first need to look at what sonic booms are, okay? And this is all going to come full circle. Just bear with me. So according to Wikipedia, a sonic boom is the sound associated with the shock waves created whenever an object travels through the air faster than the speed of sound. They generate, generate enormous amounts of sound energy, sounding similar to an explosion or thunderclap to the human ear. The crack of a supersonic bullet passing overhead or the crack of a bullwhip are examples of a sonic boom in miniature." End quote. Now, normally what happens here is when you have Mach 2 or Mach 3 or Mach 4 aircraft, particularly military fighter jets, you hear these sonic booms go off, especially if you live close to a military or air force air base or something like this, right? Now, that's going to come full circle as well. But the next thing that I want to mention here is I want to talk about Operation Crossroads. So what was Operation Crossroads? According to Wikipedia, but I mean, this is pretty well known, Operation Crossroads was a pair of nuclear weapon tests conducted by the United States at Bikini Atoll in mid-1946. They were the first nuclear weapon tests since Trinity in July 1945 and the first detonations of nuclear devices since the atomic bombing of Nagasaki on August 9th, 1945, end quote. Now, the number of tests that were completed were two, and then the third one was canceled, and I will explain why. So, Operation Crossroads, and ironically enough, notice how there was the Trinity Project within that operation, which is not coincidental considering the project, the name of this project. Operation Crossroads, according to Phil Schneider and Al Bilek and Duncan Trussell and a handful of others, uh, sorry, Duncan Cameron, my apologies, um, was conducted closer to a specific area of alleged Grey and Nordic alien bases prior to this Griotta Treaty being conducted. Back in these days, in the 30s and 40s, believe it or not, a lot of government officials who had spotted Grey aliens in caves all the way back in 1909 had referred to them as Grey demons. And so Operation Crossroads was actually done on purpose in order to try and destroy some of these alien bases, according to, again, Duncan Cameron, Al Bilek, and many others, instead of exploding more to the South Pacific in more of an open landed area. And the reason for this was because very simple, just like anything else in life, you fear what you don't understand, right? Now you might say, Dave, what does this have to do with sonic ripples, with eyeballs and ripples in timelines? Now, when we take a look at the fact that sonic booms are essentially going at the speed of light, uh, sorry, the speed of sound or even faster, we then have to look at what the next step is here. What is faster than the speed of sound? The speed of light traveling at light speed, right? And is it a coincidence that it is now being found within the retina of human eyeballs that there is a direct correlation between the universal understanding of quantum data ingrained within our physical aspect of our biological retina or ret retina, if you want to call it for plural use, and a 
a connection between that and the overall concept of what galaxies look like. Now, this can dictate to us some of the past and future events that may in fact occur. However, it dictates something even more important than that. It dictates through the use of studying quantum information of the retina of the eyeball. It suggests that time is one in the same. There is no past, there is no present, there is no future, which many scientists and religious um, authorities and figures have suggested before as well too and have stated or confidently inferred at the very least. Now, the connection here is that if you can understand that everything is all in one within the synchronicity of time, then when there are ripples within the time, uh, I guess we could say the the time rupture or the timeline of this universe, what happens then is that there is actually a synchronicital alteration within the human retina and this is not confirmed i will be i will tell you right now this is not confirmed but there is a study that is currently being done to suggest this because again if certain parts of animal retina i uh, retina eyeballs excuse me are able to dictate where these animals are on the food chain and on the survival hierarchy of things in the jungle then why could this not dictate as well in a more human conscious and self-aware state and a transcended state, what is going on within the universe. So there have m been many dead bodies all over the world where their eyeballs have been ripped up or have been taken very mysteriously. And then the morgue and the cemetery people, they cannot explain it. The funeral home people, they have no idea what happened. Just overnight, a bunch of eyeballs from a bunch of corpses have gone missing. Not only that, but if I can refer to an article over here, I believe it was by the uh, express.co.uk, and I quote, thousands of dead fish without eyes found washed up on a beach in Pinatamata, Italy, end quote. Now, the reason for this is because eyeballs from humans are exclusive and unique to understanding certain time ripples that are generally created by black holes, which are then, which were theorized by Einstein a hundred years before this was even proven to be true. Now, that is one thing that dictates to us what is occurring, the human eye, but there are different types of eyeballs, obviously, from different animals that dictate different things and so this is an overall collection that is being assembled as part of the fusion cell and if you haven't seen that episode check that out which is talking about the fusion cell within the cia that looks at the overall cosmic balance of things now if we jump back to operation crossroads the reason for that operation being so close to uh you know metropolitan cities and what have you even though it was still out in the open the reason why it wasn't done more in the south pacific when they dropped these bombs was because they understood at the time, at a classified level, that causing a ripple in the timeline will catch the attention of these gray aliens. Not only did they want to destroy their bases because they didn't know who they were, they feared what they didn't understand, and they just wanted to get rid of what they called these gray demons at the time. But at the same time, they wanted to get their attention by saying, listen, we know that disrupts the cosmic balance of things. So we're going to mess with you essentially and we're going to get your attention whether you like it or not and if we don't get your attention then we're going to kill you now obviously this is a very militaristic way of thinking and it's no coincidence that kennedy's generals were telling him as he was president about 20 some odd years later that doing the same type of tests were imminent and were uh, very well versed in being able to lure a lot of these aliens out of their bases kennedy said to them you're crazy they're leaving us alone so let's leave them alone and clearly they're more advanced than we are so why even bother to fight them, right? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is that when we take a look at, for example, the missing 411 situations, the CIA, as according to some of the recent documents that have been declassified, has stated that over a million people go missing every year, not kidnappings, not rapes, not sex trafficking, not none of that, not child trafficking, even though those things are terrible, none of that stuff, literally go into national forests and just disappear and go missing. And this is something that the CIA has somewhat admitted to there have been a handful of former employees who have come out and said this is true and that those who have been given access to the ufo project blue book black vault classification access files have seen this as well but what we have to look at here is a much bigger understanding of what light codes are right so when we look at the fact that we can understand through either a spiritual sense or a scientific sense the eyeballs and the retina of different animals and people which will tell us different things we can also look at here 
the fact that when we take a step back and look at gravitational waves, our eyeballs are a reflection of that. And believe it or not, our eyeballs in a standard sense are actually viewing things upside down. There are certain layers and certain uh, cloaks within our eyes that flip everything upside down and bring it towards this type of uh, positional stance, right? Now, when we look at this gravitational wave, we have to understand what it is first. A gravitational wave is, is an invisible yet incredibly fast ripple in space. Space. Gravitational wa waves travel at the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second, and these waves squeeze and stretch anything in their path as they pass by. And quote, this is according to spaceplace.nasa.gov. Now, when we look and we, we understand that this is what a gravitational wave is, we need to think back and to say that first off, gravity was thought of as a particle up until the mid to late 80s, until it was then discovered that it was a wave. Einstein had theorized and proposed this a hundred years ago, if not just a little bit more than that, and he was ridiculed. He wasn't exactly ridiculed in the, tr the traditional sense, because by that point, everyone knew that he was an extremely intellectual person, but they could just not prove that gravity was a wave. Well, if gravity is a wave, and it's already by nature, by definition, causing a ripple because of it traveling at the speed of light, then what happens if you cause a ripple within that ripple? What then happens is it has been known that there is a slight differentiation within all human eyeballs, all animal eyeballs, within their retina that you would need to see microscopically because the reflection of the universe alters the reflection of the eyes through light codes, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, we need to understand that when these ripples within the ripples are broken and split up, what happens here? It's been theorized that black holes occur. And where these black holes take us, we don't know. It's been theorized that other types of teleportation devices occur. Uh, sorry, teleportation apparatuses, sorry, occur within the universe, which could be just a an advanced harnessing of this extremely advanced simulation that we live in. And I apologize for those who don't subscribe to that proposal, but it's probably the best way I can put it considering the connection between geometric shapes, the Fibonacci sequence, and so on, right? Now, the next thing we have to look at, too, is we have to know that a lot of whistleblowers who have said to have worked on UFOs have claimed that they have seen devices there that look like they refer to them as devices because they had no other way to explain them but they looked very similar to human eyeballs as if they were removed from their sockets and connected to some type of machine within some of these ufos why is this the case they're not using eyeballs to give power to anything although it has been said that a certain i guess we could say compound by the name of adrenochrome I got to be careful saying that because YouTube might remove me for saying that, but adrenochrome has been extracted from the eyeball gland and it is something that the greys use and other Nordics use as well in order to fuel certain technologies, right? However, not only is it used for that, but these eyeballs are used as a collective, a collective indication of what is going to occur within the space-time continuum as they're traveling at the speed of light. Because if you get caught within a ripple, within a ripple, within a ripple, Sort of like Inception, how you get caught within a dream, within a dream, within a dream, uh, for those who've seen the film. You create a very dangerous uh, situation within your environment because it's almost like going into the quantum realm of things. It's very difficult to escape. And quantum computing has been able to harness this. But the idea is that if quantum computing can get powerful enough to harness and recorrect the ripples within the time-space continuum and the ripples within those gravitational ripples, then there may be a way to actually not fully, but curate some form of the future. Now, will this affect the past? It's very hard to say because, again, I'm not a physicist and I don't claim to be one, nor am I even close to being a quantum physicist, but all of the pieces of the puzzle are adding up here. So when we look at all this, we have to understand that these ripples in space-time are deeply connected to the way in which is reflected within the microscopic quantum data of our eyeballs. And other animals' eyeballs dictate other different things, almost like we come from stars, right? Technically speaking, we're stardust. Other animals come from different things if we, if we go off of the Big Bang Theory. But ultimately, the universe is one and one is with the universe. I know that sounds corny to some people, and I know that that is a repetitive statement, and um, accusation, we could say, within the spiritual world. But again, it is necessary because we see that more and more often, even with alien technology, as I discussed just a few days ago. So let's jump into light codes now, because I want to take a look at 
exactly what light codes and light language is to and i really want to just define it for people who don't understand so according to baguacenter.com and i quote so what exactly is light codes and light language well let's go back to dna within our dna light or vibrational frequencies of light is what makes up our dna light is vibrational frequencies that carry the codes of creation dna is activated via spiritual awakening to create the light body the higher levels of consciousness opens one up exceeding the understanding of the vocabulary based languages known to man when one is tapped into a higher consciousness language is expanded to tones hand gestures known as mudras geometry and more essentially language of light speaks in universal compatibility as the mother of all other languages in existence end quote now let's take let's point a few things out here did it just mention geometry right now i want to make a very quick connection back to a lot of the geometric symbols that are found on ufos that are found within the microscopic metals of ufos and the rings of the ufo discs or whatever shape it is this is not a coincidence not only noting that as i spoke about yesterday a lot of this language is a holographic substrate which seems to be some type of extremely advanced nanotechnology that harnesses the components and frequencies of the universe within certain electromagnetic ranges now i know i talk about frequencies quite Quite often some people may debate and say well Dave this is not the answer to life this is not the answer to the universe and I would re very respectfully agree with that but at the same time I would disagree because we have to look at all of the possible options and it is only not just my research but many others as well that keep leading back to frequencies and vibrations which seem to stem and connect the science realm or the science world with the spiritual world and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes we've been making lately which is that science and spirituality are one in the same and spirituality is just an advanced understanding of what many would call religion and i know that some might take offense to that comment but again i i feel it has to be said so through the use of light language and light codes this type of ascension is creating an unstable balance but a necessary balance within the universe that allows for this type of disruption to be occurred the only thing that can match this is that of a nuclear bomb and why does this piss off these aliens so much because not only does it disrupt the cosmos but at the same time the fact that this is an artificial bomb and an atom is split without any type of consciousness attached to it creates much more of a ripple within a ripple of these gravitational waves and again we don't know what makes up i think 80 or 90 percent of the universe it's referred to as dark matter again this is i don't think they should call it that but that's just my opinion especially when they don't know what it is i even neil degrasse tyson believes that it shouldn't be called that but anyways the point here is that when we look at the human eyeballs and we look at how valuable they are we can see that there are so many unproven and so many untested things at least on a public level that everybody in terms of the scientific community and medical community and geneticist community and biology community seem to completely dismiss probably because they're not given funding for these things because again you get too close or you delve too much into the quantum aspects of any type of a consciousness being or a creature not just a human you start getting into the secrets of, I guess we could call life for the universe, which then allows for more advanced technology to be harnessed, which is something they don't want to happen on a public level. So again, let me know what you guys think. Again, sorry if I was a little, a little bit all over the place, but there was just tons to connect here and we will catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.